Hello. Today we will be playing Shelter. We're about to begin Master's Night scene now. Where they spend time in the baths right before Skies Ablaze. It's so cold here. I had to take off my boots and trousers and a flask and jump into the hot water as soon as possible. I unfasten the laces on my boots and start tugging them off one at a time. I, can, I can't do that while standing and jumping on one leg like a dummy, so sit down on the floor to do that. Once both of my boots come off, socks and trousers quickly follow. I let out a loud gasp when my exposed thighs touch the ice cold floor. I get on all fours and start crawling towards the, the water in nothing but my underwear. Just a few more steps and... Halt, mate! Suddenly, Woo emerges from under the water and puts his big wet hand on my face, stopping me in my tracks, the steaming hot bear is almost within the reach of my arm. Woo, stop it! Let me in and I'll bite your hand off. I swear to... Not until you drop your, your boxes first. No pants allowed, not denying. Are you for real? Stop being a dumbass and let me. Burry, can you please help, huh? When I look at Burry, I see him submerged to his neck in water, relaxing. I wasn't paying attention earlier, but now I notice that. Despite the water surface being in view, I can tell that he's not wearing any underwear either. He looks back at me with a hand of a bear's bent. Um, forgive me, will you prefer me to? I turn the mask instead. Oh boy. Sorry, Luke. I just assume since we're all friends. That's fine, Luke. Luke. We can bathe cover if you prefer. No, it's okay. No, it's not okay. This is a night for us to celebrate skies ablaze to our fullest, no restraints. The fact that you don't want to bathe with your friends naked shows that you're still holding yourself back. You could say that your underwear symbolizes your mental barriers. For your own good, I will get rid of them and set you free. Same with your mental gymnastics. You're just a, a pervert and want to see my junk. Even if, if I do, so what? Why are you so embarrassed about that? I've already seen your junk. But wait, Rune, you have seen it as well? Both of you did too? Both Mats and Burry are completely shocked by that revelation while Rune is overjoyed. Apparently they never talk with each other about other about those real events. But when? When did that happen? Oh, I was in bed with Luke naked before we even said his first words. Oh? I hear a note on nostalgia boy's voice as he starts reminiscing about the past, but he quickly stops himself and cut and fate calls flustered. His embarrassment doesn't measure up to mine, though. It's true that I've been naked with each of my friends at some point in the past, usually due to, to unusual circumstances. Still, when it's brought up like that, it makes me sound like a pervert. I'm not, though. I'm a decent person. However, more than my pride, I'm bothered about me, me sprawled nearly naked over the ice cold floor right now. Seems both Rune and Max are covered or dis are distracted. I seize the opportunity to dodge to the side, grab the ends of the towel, and pull myself into the water. The voices of my friends get muffled as I get enveloped into the, into the warmth into the world of warmth. Too much warmth. It, it's hot, it burns. God. Luke. I hear a quiet splash of water and Max is by my side almost instantly. Dragging my back to the, to the edge of the pool, I cling to it while I let my body get used to the sudden change in temperature. Breathe, Luke. Breathe. I embrace the cold floor with my chest and my arms spread. When I give it some time, the heat of the water slowly turns from painful to soothing. I think I will live. So as I was saying, Damn it, Rune, you're impossible. Well, okay, okay. I won't press you anymore. But come on, you're making such a big deal, such a big of a deal about that, but it isn't at all. Every single one of us 
has already seen your nigga, all three of us. Four. The husky is right, for once. Not a big deal at all. All of us jump, surprised to stare at the darkest corner in the room. It's Alan. My friends growl and look all tense, but I'm happy. That's until his words sink in. Hey, don't say that. It's a way above average deal. Come to think of it, how will he even know? Luke, stay close. He embraces me with his white arm, his white forearm with a single spot. A single puss of his strong legs takes up the takes up to the opposite end of the pool as far from out as possible. It's all tense and keeps as it keeps a protective stance for a mug in his hand like an improvised weapon. I hear a loud splash and both Mass and Bernie are out of the water, standing on the cold floor and ready to fight. Everything's happening so fast. What are you doing here? Speak. Stay your business or see yourself finally put down, Wolf. If it makes you feel any better, I hate it as much as you do. Nothing personal, I am simply bound by an oath that I have to see fulfilled. It has to be done. I knew it. I knew from the start that you were bad news. I wanted to take down all four of us at once while we were vulnerable rather than separately. I don't know if you're that clever or that stupid. We don't need our gear to take on the likes of you. Are you for sure? If I want all you would have been dead. Be careful. He, he must have come prepared. As I always am. Damn it, Alan. Stop being quipped and just tell them why you're really here. Luke? I told you it was a terrible idea. Some people aren't meant to be with others. The sooner you come to terms with that fact, the sooner you can learn to welcome solitude instead of fighting it. As I do. Alan takes out a cigarette and lights it up, making all the dogs flinch. However, I see the tension slowly dropping. You, Luke? Do you, did you happen to invite Alan here? Yep, sorry I didn't tell you. Honestly, I'm surprised he actually came. I did not break a, a given word. Never. Ever. So, sorry, we jumped to conclusions. So, just to be sure. You're not going to attempt to hurt us at any point tonight, correct? Then you listen. If I want to, all you were already. No, he's not going to hurt anyone. He came here to celebrate with all of us. Come on, get back here, guys. Everything's fine. We can get back to partying. You let go of me, Rune. I move Boone's arm aside and swim to the other side of the bath, towards the others to get back to the warm water. Burry and Max reluctantly dip back in. Now Alan stays in the corner smoking his cigarette. As soon as you finish your smoke, you're coming in too. Forget it. I promise to come to the bath with you, but I am not bound to do anything beyond that. I will just stand here and listen, just like at the tavern. May I maybe offer a comment if I feel like it. Well, okay, at least that's something. But you will have a toast with us, right? A toast, huh? Mass, why don't you say a few words? Kickstart the party. Um, sure I can, if you want. I grab a sealed bottle of particularly fancy air and throw it in Alan's direction. The wood slashes the glass neck. Midair with one of his knives and only then he catches the rest of the bottle in his hand. The neck is cut off clean and it rolls in all directions. The rogue leans against the wall with his eye closed and a cigarette still in his, in his mouth. I'm pretty sure he poses for us to appear more impressive. But guys, I do speeches all the time. Wouldn't it be more special if Burry, Rune, or you did it tonight? Oh, I could not possibly... Come on, Matt Stewart, you're a good you're good at those. You were born for that kind of stuff. Matt stakes his hand and size and embarrassment. Born for that, huh? I'm happy to say I'm happy to say that, but I can't agree. I don't believe that any of us is born for anything. It's thanks to you that it's thanks to you all that I was able to become who I am now. Yes, but something like talent is a factor, is it not? Maybe honestly, I feel 
that what we are given to us becomes a distraction more other than a merit, especially if it sets up expectations for the wrong people. You ruined it was decided for you even before you were born that you were destined to become a hero. They were dedicated to molding you they were dedicated to molding molding you into one and for a while you followed the, that path but that wasn't something that fulfilled you. Right? Right now you're leading a completely different life. That's true. You brother, you live by following other people's expectations of being as, as well. You follow an unfulfilling path set for you. And you didn't know what was truly important to you until you lost it. But you aren't unhappy now, are you? You have abandoned your old path of wonder, lost for a long time, but now you are here with us. You are, you are correct. And you, Wolf, Alan, were you always so calm? Were you all so cool and manly and independent and alone? And maybe you chose this life as a reaction to someone else trying to force you onto a path you didn't want. S shut up. You don't know me. I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I was just guessing. You're not completely wrong, though. I have been treading this dark, lonely path in spite of my inborn curse. You took all you did, but worse. The way they treated me, the words they addressed me by, they dug into my heart deeper than any dagger would, and I will forever bear the innocent scars left by them. Yes, anyway, we all are born cursed, and living is all about struggling to make the best out of our misery. Until one day we inevitably return back to the earth, keeping this ins inescapable cycle of pointless suffering running until the end of time. They discuss. Then he focuses on them with the phone off the tip of his, of his bottle. No further questions are follow, but I can still, but I can see intrigue or entertainment in my friend's eyes. For now, better to leave him be. Max rests his back on the smooth stones as he closes his eyes, deep in thought. None of us say a word. That's something all of us have in common. Me and Ackley were brought up among the felines, and they use our abilities in the conflicts against our own people. At first we didn't see anything wrong in that. The cats were good to us in our upbringing. We were loyal to our guardians and mentors. Plus even when the alienation and doubts creeped in, me and Acri always had each other. We were inseparable. Two of a kind and I would have given my life for him. We were, when we became too inconvenient for the felines, it was Ackley who decided for the two of us to flee to this country before they could end us. And then I questioned him. I thought whatever he said. I didn't know at that time he was using me to reach his own motives. No, that's not true. I always knew, but I didn't care. I was my only family. I loved him. I was all dedicated to him, body and mind. Nothing and no one else mattered. Love, friendship, loyalty. Those all terrifying powers, relationships in general are. When misunderstood and misused, they become chains of the oppressed, desperate, and lost. Just like I was a slave to my love, willingly blind and deaf to the rest of the world. Man's pauses and gulps. I can see his eyes glistening with tears gathering. But he blinks a few times and smiles. But then Luke came into my life, with and shelter. By losing Acri, I gained a new feeling. I now myself can grow to be better. Everything about me is just the best parts of both from everyone else I have met along my way. Easy you as well. Now with my heart open and the world bigger than ever, I know that family isn't about the roots you share. It's whoever helps you find your true purpose and sets you free. You are not the family I was born to, but the one I have chosen. One I will protect with the little strength I have to my last breath. Thank you guys for choosing me as well. Cheers everyone. For just one night, let us put aside the hardships, responsibilities of our daily lives and celebrate the path we have chosen to walk together. Let's drink to shelter to family. Let's sponsor that bury and room raise their mugs and that and that out loud long house. Somewhere far outside, how gets returned. Then another, and five more, and then a hundred. 
It's wonderful. If Max's purpose is to keep our pack growing in harmony, then the sounds of the howling crowds outside prove his contribution has it been or not. He didn't be no match during the howling. He looks away, probably embarrassed about the reflex reflexivity, switching into his speech mode after saying he shouldn't. But he is clearly happy. His tail wags and he, he smiles. I'm happy too, so much that I laugh. And I glance at Alan, and I almost drop my log while I see the look on his face. Am I seeing right? He notices me stare at him. He quickly wipes his cheek and starts chugging off the, the bottle. He winces, and another tear appears in his eye. I think he cut himself on a glass edge. My attention gets poured back to the other dogs when everyone in the bath starts gathering together. The four of us take deep breaths and swing our mud so hard that a big splash sparkles all over us at the delicious sound of L. The shelter. The enormous metal structure stands as a bright beacon of life amidst the frozen, empty plains. The cold exterior hosts hundreds of heartbeats, laughter and howls echo throughout these once abandoned hallways. Tonight, the celebration is a miracle. However, it isn't its protection that attracts people. Those with unstated yearnings won't find peace and safety or stability. Mystery, romance, and challenge is what draws them. Promises and hopes. Even if the sky itself can burst into bright passion, then why shouldn't they aim to do the same? If they witness the limits being broken over and over, then maybe in the end there have never been any limits at all? In the struggle against the land, the cold in their own cells let the winds rekindle the dying embers. As tonight we fight and celebrate that what is yet unknown. Once got a bad boy, shut his own dog. Moon instantly swings and drinks his shot of spirit, then shows me the empty glass for a refill. While I pour him another shot, Matt laughs and drinks his shot as well. I spare Burry to look at to look at them in disappointment, but to my surprise, he winds and hesitantly sips the content of his glass as well. He avoids my stare. Well, we fill his glass. Well, well, Burry, not so much of a Saint Bernard, are you? I have never claimed I was. People are inclined to try unreasonable things when youthful lust clouds judgment. Did you gum into the gum in your mouth too? <laughs> Come on, Boom. You already asked your question. You ask that one on your next round. Please don't. That's embarrassing. At least Luke was a good boy growing up. He didn't drink this round either. Yeah, I'm surprised. Seriously, Luke, you never tried doing that? Not even when growing up? Oh yeah, I still tried, but I'm just not that flexible. What? Really? I, I never noticed. Is that true? I see, I see. Mate, that sucks. You're missing out. Nothing I can do about that, I try and try, but my bad just doesn't bend as easily as the canines. And now that I'm an adult, I got even more with it. It's okay, Luke. That's not your fault. It's not even a matter of fault. That's just how it is. Nothing weird. <laughs> yeah, but it's probably fun to be able to do that sometimes, huh? A blow hobby whenever you want. But yeah, I'd sort of break my spine to get the lips wrapped over my junk. 
This guy might share with me through a couple more bottles and maybe you won't have to. Well, at least you are safe from drinking this round too, Luke. You, yeah, again. <laughs> yeah. Have you had even a single shot since we started? Nope. Not yet. I looked at the spirit in my side glass. It's been sitting there for a good 10 minutes. I wonder if it still has any alcohol left or has it already evaporated in the heat by now. We're playing a, sim a pretty simple drinking game called Once Ago a Bad Boy. Basically, each of us makes an embarrassing statement. Then everyone to whom th that statement applies has to drink a shot. And the rest are good boys for the round. And then they can be proud of their tails. And seeing the dogs playing that at the tavern at the, uh, all the time, there's always a, a lot of laughter and sharing stupid stories from the past who we get to learn new things about your friends through it. But ever since we started playing, none of the statements have applied to me yet. Not because I'm such a good boy, but because all these statements so far only fit canines in one way or another, culturally or physically. Once ago, a bad boy made a doll from his own setting. Once ago, a bad boy buried a, a snack in the ground and forgot there, and forgot where. Once ago, a bad boy got his dog stuck in a hole. Those are all things that I have never thought about doing, but they're apparently embarrassing, embarrassingly common among my friends. That's a fascinating. But a little frustrating, I can't even make myself drink my own statement because the rules that whoever drank their shot first in the last round goes first. Even Alan had more to drink than me. I noticed that he held on when drink, with drinking his own, with drinking his until a question was asked and he sometimes had his sip, sometimes not. Thanks to that, I found out that most of those previous statements applied to him all. Thanks to that, that, I found out that most of those previous statements apply to him too. Why, right, mate? You're good at this game. You gotta outlast all of us. We wouldn't mind having at least one shot, you know? Well, maybe you will now. Once go away. Nope, you can't ask two questions in a row. It's my turn now. Come on, I have a good one. A sax or one, I presume. But those are the best. Keep that thought. I'm sure you'll still have a chance. In the meantime, Let's go, a bad boy. Got smoothed by someone of another species. Crap, I was in sense it was. I splashed the spirit in my throat, and some of, that, some of that went in the wrong hole. I immediately cough out the whole sock back over the bare surface. It makes a beautiful yet short little rainbow. Luke, I'm okay. Ugh. Yeah, I got it. I was first. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. Here, have a refill. You earned it. Max takes a liquor bottle and fills my side glass. I notice that he has somehow odd. He chuckles and he glances at me. I see the insides of his ears blushing a little. Oh, that's right. I wasn't expecting, I wasn't specifically thinking about Max when I drank that side, but yeah, we have smooths in the past. So, mate, how about you share a story? Must be a good one. Who sits in the water with his arms spread out comfortably, unlike Max the Husky stares at me with a knowing proud grin. Oh yeah, the two of us definitely did make out as well. Just so you know, Luke, there's no pressure on you. You do not need to sell any personal details if you don't want to. Rory well, shows his empty side glance at Max for a brief as well. He gives side glances in my direction. He's visibly embarrassed. Yeah, yeah, me and Barry kissed one time as well, now that I think about it. This is a real situation. I've been kissed by each, by each three of them at some points in the past, but judging, but judging by the reaction, they must have never said that secret of the others, not even room. And glance at Alan cautiously to gauge his reaction, but he pretends to be as disinterested as ever. He probably hasn't had a chance to find out about those events either. <laughs> yeah, boy is right. If you don't want to, we can leave it at that. Unless you really want to boast, huh? At least the breed. Tell them the breed of your first moose, Luke. I think it's unfair to pull at, the, at his tongue. Tell them if you really want. 
but only if you want, not because you were forced. Whatever you decide to share, you have my support, Luke. To be completely honest with you, I wouldn't mind either way. Whether you decide to tell them or not, it's a good. It's all good with me, Luke. I wonder what kind of a handsome hug or dog it was to give you that first smooth. Come on, just a pretty mate. My first kiss for a member of another species. Now that's embarrassing. I was so fixated into in grabbing that first ring that I didn't fully think through the tenses behind that question. One specific person came to my mind at the word smooth, but the guys are going to laugh at me if I tell them. See, I probably should, stare, should say or something. This is the whole point of this game. And this is a specific night I can't afford to be more open than usual. The boy in my first smooth, huh? Um, he he wasn't a canine, huh? What? Then he was a lion. What? What? A lion? Hold on. So I wasn't your first? Wait, wait, wait. Brain Luke, you too? Seriously? When? Was that before? Was it before or after we did it? Lulu Slough. <laughs> Shut up, Alan. First throwing your dog around now, kissing other dogs, unbelievable. Yeah. Now, now, everyone, let's take a deep breath and calm down. We we're putting Luke in way too uncomfortable of a situation. Yeah. Sorry, you're right. Just to be clear, I'm not jealous or anything. Nothing weird about being intimate with different people. Especially for canines, even if you are not one. You tend to learn some of our behaviors, huh? Yeah, yeah. But a feline, seriously? Are oh, their tongues and dogs all spiky and scary? I'm sorry, guys, but you're all weeding too deep into that. You never told me you had a feline lover. You never told me you had any previous lovers. Well, you did tell me at one point that you were fond of felines, so. I meant that literally. I like felines, not specifically in a romantic way. You see, back home, actually, that's kind of a long story. Let's talk about that another time. Look, you unbelievable tease. I know, it is fine. Take your time. I'm so curious, though. In that case, get more, get me more drunk. Remind me later, and I'll tell you. But now, let's not stall any longer. <sighs> fine. But make your turn something good, something I can drink to. I still have like 10 really good lines. Oh no. It is alright, Luke. Despite it being a drinking game, you do not need to ask anything vulgar. Just ask whatever you want. It's going to be fun to find out things about each other, regardless of how mild or spicy. Okay, well then. And again, I was, just, I was so fixated on getting that first side that I didn't think ahead. There's absolutely, any, there's absolutely anything I can ask now, but it's often harder to choose one thing when the possibilities are endless. If I were to go with my friend's preferences, Burry would probably enjoy something heartwarming, Burry would like something preferred, and probably something in between for Max. Well, we all have the secret fair player, my should really, well, should probably take into consideration as well. I wonder what kind of a dark question would pique his interest. No point thinking too much. Let's just add something instead of holding the game. Let's go, a bad boy. Cast a pet mentality of fun. All three of my friends were swing their socks. But by a quick glance, I noticed that Alan didn't take his sip. But does he take that power so seriously he's never thought about having fun with it? Or is he so much of a long wolf he never had a chance? Pet mentality is the canines what Monavis is to me, their inborn magic ability. In short, it allows multiple people to mentally connect for perfect coordination and wordless communication, have experience with that power too. But have I ever used it outside of a battle scenario? And take a moment to think, and then I drink my side as well. Who was first? Who was first? I think Bowie was. They're slightly ahead of you two. Good job, Bowie. It's interesting we we all drank for that. That's a pretty common thing, actually. Even your first pet mentality is really in combat. Mine was though. 
Yeah, but you're not a dog. You're different. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, story time, Barry? <laughs> oh, I do not know if I should. If you don't want to, I can tell you in detail about how I've been using it in fun lately. Come over. Let him speak. It's rare we get an answered question like that. That's perfect for Barry. Your story's answered, right, Barry? <laughs> not exactly no, but maybe it would be the right thing to share this one here. You see, me and my brothers used to be quite mischievous puppies. You should hardly believe it. Believe if I told you some of the twists and points we did. Oh, mischievous Barry. That's hard for me to imagine. <laughs> Indeed. Truly embarrassing. So, we were all taught reading and writing at a young age. However, we were mostly given study materials a bunch of somehow drilly written old records. My brothers did not find those entertaining. Well, I did, but my brothers were more interested in, in the prose, fables and letters written in a more flowery language. Of course, I liked those too. I did, because they were something that both me and them shared enjoyment in. However, we were, we were rarely allowed to read the fables, definitely not at the sunset. Our character did care. Okay. So, we were all taught reading and writing at a young age. However, we were mostly given study materials and a bunch of somehow drolly written old records. My brothers did not find those entertaining. Well, I did, but my brothers were more interested in the prose, fables and legends written in a more flowery language. And of course, I liked those too. I did because they were something that both me and them shared enjoyment in. However, we were rarely allowed to read the fables, definitely not at the sunset. Our caretakers were, were very strict about that. So my brothers came up with a plan, a bold and elaborate one. We would all learn pet mentality as well as the art of concealing our monarch signatures, all to outwit the caretakers. I was against that. I was, a, I was a good boy, I didn't want to lie to the adults. I also wanted to be a part of the pack, so I refrained from forcing out my concerns. But wait. it was a tall order, but it was also insane and exciting. We would go through our usual daily routines, but then spend our weights and parts of our bare time putting into practice everything we learned about pet mentality from our studies. We were all pretty clever and motivated, so we saw the effects of our training within weeks. Not even one month passed, we were already able to put our plans into motion. So, we would wait until bedtime to connect as a pet, and the caretakers went to sleep themselves. Then, a small group would go out. We spread out in many directions, each keeping a lookout on one side while the, old, while the oldest of us was in the library. That way, we had everything covered up, covered at the same time, and we were able to react in case an adult woke up. Not too bad. Very, pretty clever for a bunch of amateur kids. <laughs> Thank you. But I can not take credit for that. One of the older brothers was testing study espionage stratagem, so he co coordinated the rest of us. That's why not surely the adults do not expect that sharing such knowledge would buy them back in their collective behind. <laughs> anyway, the first night we brought a book, brought back a book back to our bedroom was magical. 
We sat huddled and wandered the corners with a single candlelit and we indulged in so many wonderful stories. Even some of those were even some of those we were forbidden due to our age. Captivating tales of fiction as well as colorized records of old history. Roll chasing events and heroes and of course a few records of your own prog- progenies as well. Room. The Poetic Renaissance of New Moon by B.B. Healer was especially beloved amongst my brothers. Truly beautiful, breathtaking work. It is hard to believe that most of those tales were based on the truth. Believe me or not, but I have never really read that one, like cover to cover. Emerson gave me a copy last year by only glanced through the spicy chapters. Somehow I do believe you. Even if we spent more time on those chapters than I would like to admit, we were all at that age of fascination with intimacy. Either way, it was an exciting secret we all shared and kept from the adults. While we were reading, we always had someone on the lookout. But even those scouting outside the room were still connected, so, none, so nobody missed a single word. Pet mentality is amazing, indeed. And through a silly childish secret like that, we trained that power to play a proficient level. Later on, the adults didn't have much more to teach us in that matter. Well, it was far from perfect, though. That story had a very unfortunate ending, but I do not wish to sound the move with that part. I reckon this is the right moment to stop. So I ask a question now, or would you prefer to play a different game? A different game, huh? Actually, yeah. I had di- I had an idea. But my questions, you may still have a chance to ask them. I thought about playing some trick or tribute. So, we have turns giving someone else a, a task. If you feel it, everyone else has to drink a shot. But if you choose not to, you have to drink a shot yourself and give up a piece of clothing. But we are already naked, so it is just tricks. Actually, I wanted to give it a twist. Max gave me a, wo- a, wo- a bottle of water mana potion. So for so for the tribute option, how about instead of giving up a piece of clothing, we drink a side of the potion, then give out one random item from our seal. If we don't have anything left to take out, then we have no choice but to fulfill the trick, I guess. Oh, I love that. Let's do that. I haven't accessed a seal in a while, but I'm sure I haven't. I have a lot of crap here. I was hoping you would suggest something like that. They both had their tails inside before I probably swim towards the rubble by the outer wall. He places his hand over a few spots along the stone surface. Slowly he traces along the cracks, investigating. Hmm, yes. Well, this crack is a small mark by one of the cracks on the wall over the water surface. He turns around to us with a smile. We still have the ears of shelter's influence, but you can try the spot. The damage may make it possible for you to force your way through a pile of snow and into the soil. I cannot guarantee I cannot guarantee but this would be your best shot. Sure, we can try that. Ask your trick, Burry. <laughs> Very well then, Max. I'm glad it's from you. I know you won't ask anything stupid. <laughs> thank, thank you. In that case, for your trick, it would be okay with you to give me a back massage until the time comes when someone else asks you your next question gladly. Boy sits at the edge of the bath and bends down. Matt squirms out of the water to approach St. Bernard from behind. Boy lets out a satisfied groan and a wide smile curls up his muzzle with a small dowsing was his back. He's clearly enjoying himself. Oh yes, right there, harder. We digging deep, Max. Yes, well that's good. Anyways, cheers, everyone. I think let's drink outside. So I like this game much more than our previous one. I'm going to get comfortably raised in no time. Hey, look, is it just me or is the big guy getting kind of tipsy already? Hard to tell. He's happier than usual. That's for sure. Have we drank that much already? Apparently some dogs don't need months despite the fatness. Room. Yes, give it to me. Give me the worst you got. Oh, cheeky, I like it. 
You're pretty fearless, aren't you? I'm not fearless. I'm saying this. There's no tweet you can embarrass me well. Oh, really? In that case? Hmm. Is it okay to ask a question as a trick? I say it is, yeah. Perfect. You like asking others blunt personal questions, so how about a piece of your old medicine, huh? Bring it on. You got nothing on me. I order you to tell me. That's a strong, manly Siberian husky hero, Blue Moon. Ever had any, anything done to him from behind? Like by another dog? Uh huh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Boom. I'm so sorry, Boom. I'm clearly crossing the line with this joke. I'll ask you another. No, it's fine. I love it both ways. Seriously, why wouldn't I? What's the point in limiting yourself to only, only have the options? You know more than the big, the big saggy Commodore. He was recently as yesterday, right before I came to the tavern after the morning training. We behind one of the snow piles outside, and he took out that he's red, that he's white cherry red. Okay, okay, I believe you. Come on, Luke, Burry, let's drink a side. Oh, you see, you don't have the details. They are fresh. They are still fresh in my mind. I'm a bum. You are all seeing this. Mass Burry and I drink a side of spirit while Room keeps a twine. Triumphant smirk on his silly muzzle. He has the alcohol flows down my throat and gives me that burning sensation. My curiosity lingers. I kind of wanted to know the details. Luke, yes. Trick or tribute? To trick. Set my dog. <laughs> oh come on, Luke. Stop confusing Luke. Yeah, think out a proper trick. It's okay. I'll just take a tribute instead. Fine, you're lost. I grab the crystal bottle with green li liquid inside and take a moment to admire it while it's still sealed. The crystal is smooth to the touch and there are no flaws or asymmetries in the shape. It must have been crafted by hands by the hands of a master glassmith. I love unsealing luxurious items like that, but I also feel a bit guilty when I do because a lot of beauty is irreversibly lost at the same time. It's a nice bottle, yeah. Come on, open it. That's what it's for. I know, but once it's unsealed, it's spoiled forever. I was considering maybe forcing myself through one more minor vision to check it out while it's still in one piece. Oh, I see. Oh, you see, Luke? Minor vision drinking is that too much for you today? Well, it won't hurt to try. Worst case scenario, I'll throw up or something. Now, I wish I could see that too. I mean, the potion in my vision, not you throwing up. Is there any chance you could see some mana, Luke? Sorry, I don't think so, unless you want to release it with your own hands. Oh no, don't worry about that. If you're too tired today, I won't be hurting you for no reason. Just tell me how it works. Okay, well then, here I go. Luke, in case you felt like vomiting, could you please do that on the floor behind you and not into the water? Yes, yes I could. Wow. It's so pretty. Really. What does it look like? Like a green lantern. You know, superstars. Oh, I'm so glad it's green. I was worried if, if it's genuine or not. A soup, huh? <laughs> it's good with description as it's Luke. It's this with Luke. Yeah, I like it. It's a hard thing to relax and enjoy the sights when you're struggling to maintain body visit, but this is a very soothing view. A nice sky in a bottle with a bright crystal, a bright crystal moon in the center. I feel inexplicably happy when, happy while looking at this rare bottle of magic liquid. It fills me with that gentle, natural kind of comfort. Yes, natural. Outside of witnessing mana in Delivering bottles to my friends, I use it only when dealing with ancient relics. Either way, minor vision is always a weird experience for me. For different reasons, it is my natural ability, but only to me, not to anyone else here. Whenever I, I stare into a swirling bright mass inside my friends' bodies, I feel like I'm doing something intrusive, natural, but wrong. On the other hand, I'm used to. Investigating the, the relics, but that isn't the natural state of mana. 
The relics manipulate it, bend it, and burn it in ways it would never do in nature. This crystal, however, it holds pure, unaltered mana, like an undisturbed piece of the world itself in cast in glass, resting and waiting to be released back into the cycle. Mana is abundant in most of the outside world, but not here. We're in the middle of the lands that are neither corrupted nor actually hospitable. But now looking at this bottle, I feel the kind of relief I would have if I had a chance to lie down in a field of flowers for the first time in years. Even though Green Mana is a source of wizardly aliens in the lands of the canines, it doesn't feel out of the place to me at all. After all, I myself am no less of a stranger here. Well then, I grab the decorative crystal stopper and pull it out of the decanter. The, the more I do, favor this fresh magical energy tickle over my skin, giving me goosebumps. However, since we are still inside Zelda, Mana gets pulled out into the numerous relics here. The vapors don't have the chance to linger long. Probably shouldn't keep the decanter over longer than necessary or all the Mana will evaporate. I pour myself a full shot of glass and deliver and pass the container to Max. The alcohol itself has a rich green tint to it too. Just about the strong grassy smell, it must be herbal based. It smells weird. Well then, cheers. I close my eyes and start drinking the sock cautiously. However, I stop midway. I flinch when the taste proves to be just as weird as the smell. It tastes like drinking fermented soup of grass, tree bark, and soil. My mouth feels, feels dirty. Yeah. Come on, Luke. You won't have enough mana to crack the seal if you don't finish even one sock. Chug, chug, chug. I raise my index finger to ask them to stay quiet while I try to muster the strength to finish the sock. I can't, though. I wait where really you don't like it. I wait for the lingering aftertaste to subside so I can maybe ask Will to do a truth option for him instead. But the more I think that the torture is over, something changes the other taste instead of disappearing grows stronger, along with the feeling of warmth over my throat. Really, it doesn't feel as bad anymore. I savor the same flavors, but I start noticing new dimensions to them, like a terrible noise slowly turning into a pleasant harmony. Without thinking much, I chug the rest of the side. I go through the same path, but I see it differently now. My mouth is filled with a soothing mix of spicy floral herbal flavors. With a hint of honey-like sweetness and a new layer of aroma that wasn't as permanent before, reminding me of burnt wood, it keeps the sharper elements of the composition toned down. I enjoy the warmth caressing my mouth and throat as this single shot leads me through a gradient of wit's experiences like an inspired poem. It's not all what I expected. You know, I could go for another. Tastes like crap at first, but once the mind changes your taste, it's like, I'm coming along with the force? Something like that, yeah. That's some high class experience, not at all like our plebeian tavern booze. I haven't had water in, in a bottle yet. You'll have a try, you have a chance to try. Yeah, in the meantime, let's not keep room waiting. I turn towards the spot in the wild that boy investigated in Mart. The real challenge starts now. You know, I really don't remember what I have to, what I have there exactly. Any requests, keywords? Hmm. I know. How about the most embarrassing item you have? You know, a dildo or something like that. Okay, let's try that. I put my right hand on the wall over Bowie's mark and concentrate. I can feel the presence of alien mana inside me. The mana of the water can. It runs through my spirit and remains mostly neutral in my body. Right now, it only gives me a slight buzz. It beats my senses a little, but that's nothing major. That's how most of that drinks target demographic will experience it. This is a frivolous, hedonistic, will in the moment. We are not like we're any better, but we, as experienced magic users, can use it for much more than that and take a deep breath and start burning the charge of wilded mana inside me. My heartbeat quickens, my focus jumps between different thoughts and the elements of my environment. My skin becomes more sensitive and I can't ignore the dozens of little sensations of the different parts of my body. 
I'm awakening, awakening my whole body and spirit into the spirit, the physicality and perception of the world of ways. Strangely, that, that isn't that hard for me to do. Well, when it comes to interracial marriage, different people having different vanities for different mana types, somehow using different, using world of mana always came pretty naturally to me. Earth, eternity, containment, stillness, those concepts always spoke to me, and the world of racial ability is really intu intuitive to my mind. The powers of humanity focus on perceiving the truth of all things, the canines, while serving interpersonal connections and rodents. They are the most in touch with the material aspects of the world itself. The world gives as much as it takes away, nothing is lost into nothingness, and some of all matter in the world remains unchanged at all times. The rodents can dip into the, that cycle to give and borrow from the world, using the spirit's uniqueness and the key they can lock and access a holding seal to keep those treasures safe and release them into the time of the greatest need. I have a vault like that too, and as rusty as the key may have gotten, the seal still breaks under my fingers. Oh damn, I actually got something. Oh wow, that's big. A big black. You naughty naughty boy, Luke. Never more trying to imagine phallic shapes as per room's request, I feel my fingers grabbing at something big, hard, and bulbous. I slowly start pulling it out of the wall, and it's left and thickness might make my heart sink in embarrassment. I don't even need to look at Rune to know that he's smirking right now. I push my feet against the wall, and the whole item finally pops out. It's a big, long black. Is that a monster bone? Yep, I think. Yep, I was thinking about dust, and this was the closest shape I could last on to. Sorry, but I don't think I have any dildos in there. This is case perfect. Give it to me. Pass the hussy the bone. He immediately starts munching on it. It's dry and hard, but he still looks like he's had a blast spotting all over it. I wonder why the dogs like munch on bones so much. Is that good for their teeth? Sorry, do you want a bite? Uh, no, don't worry about me. feel like my own teeth will crack if I try biting on it. <laughs> no way. It may be true that your teeth are less impressive than canine, but surely they are not that brittle. I'd really rather not even try to think of any much. Where do you get the bone anyway? Does it have any significance to you? I don't think so. I must have stored it as an emergency weapon during one of the monster attacks. Storing bones in the ground, huh? Almost like a real dog. <laughs> yeah, almost like a real dog. After that, we continue with the we continue the game. When pointing at Matt, he chose to take the roller mo roller pulse and option too. He needed a couple tries and two shots, but he managed to find to finally take something out. A request was the most feline thing you have, and with great effort, he finally managed to wrestle out a bundle of strong smelling herbs that made him rear backing disgust. Apparently, some cats used that as a rec recreational drug. When Matt asked Burry Nets, he requested a back massage as well. He looked exactly as satisfied with that as Burry, when, as, Burry, as Burry was when he received his. We was asked Nets and chose the tribute option. Burry's cue was. Procure the lightest and most innocent honor you have stored out of two sides of the poster, but with less effort than Max, he took out an envelope. When he got it in his hand, he first gasped and then made a loud, high pitched yell of sudden realization. Despite Boris's innocent request, the envelope made wound, coward, and embarrassment. He said he received it from the, his subordinate in the army years ago before they were sent to a suicide mission. Wound made an oath to deliver the letter to that soldier's love, lover back home. In the fever of battle, Rudin used a charge of water mine to store the envelope inside his holding seal where it would be kept safe. Items sealed away in the ground don't age and can't get damaged. However, by the time the campaign ended, he completely forgot about that promise. Rudin tried to turn it into a joke, but it was clear that he was embarrassed and felt guilty about that. Since that was a tribute for Burry, he took that envelope from the Hussein promised to find a trusted traveling merchant in Moosebrook to deliver the envelope instead. 
That brought relief back on Rune's muzzle. When Bird was pointed out as the next one to make his make his choice in the game, he been encouraged him to try the modern potion option as well, and he decided to give it a try. However, as hard as he tried, he wasn't able to take anything out. He was the one who found the spot in the wall to, to connect with the Earth Force, but when it came to actually using one magic, he didn't seem to be unable to initiate it. He drank one side, then another, and then he had two more. With most of the ball already empty, he, could, he still couldn't do it. It didn't seem like anything that could be solved was simply chugging more mana. Forgive me, I may be too tired and too intoxicated to, to do that after all. It's okay, sit down on that, Burry. Yeah, take it easy. You just took four shots pretty much at once. And what an experience it was. I have never severed anything like that in my entire life. I wanted to be able to, to brew delicious potions like that one day. I see you couldn't open the seal. Maybe you just wanted to drink more, eh? I would never deceive you like that. <laughs> I know, I know. Still, the matter of the game rules remains. What's your trip, Rune? Huh, huh. Uh, well then, we will pass the spot by his side. Burry gives him a cautious glare, but ultimately follows and sits down by him. Wound's tail wears at that. Okay, I'm here. I will, I will be too. For your trick, how about you let me? But what? You know. Wound's tail wags even more and he touches his own mouth. Here. I glance at Mance, but after the initial start, he just stares at them quietly and won't interrupt. Without even talking, taking his eyes off the two dogs, he grabs a big handful of raisins and eats one after another, waiting with anticipation. He offers some to me, too. I snatch a few raisins out of Mance's hand and spectate quietly as well. Instead of spectating something of this sort from you, Moon keeps wagging his tail. Just a quick one. Burry takes a deep breath. He pets. He puts one of his hands on the lads for support and starts leaning his head towards the hussy. Then he starts a little story at me and Max. For clarity, this is purely a matter of feeling a game rules and friendly so with facts with no romantic undertones whatsoever. And this only, please take into consideration that I am not completely sober tonight, so my judgment is clouded, clearly. This is spur of the moment recklessness. Max I nodded. With our mouths full with raisins, it's kind of funny to see Burry so flustered. Yeah, that's uncharacteristically cooperative for him. I fully expected him to, to object to Rune's request. Maybe he really is drunk. Maybe this is just a good excuse for, for something he secretly wants. Tonight is a night to be open and pass it after all. Burry takes another deep breath and leans closer to Rune. He's careful and unsure. Like an unexperienced, unexperienced teenager, he lingers in, like that for a moment. Until Rune takes the initiative and closes the gap between their muscles of black canine noses touch. Barry goes and gasps for air nervously. His lips tremble while wounds are cold in their smile. Barry's lips part slightly, but his tongue still severs uncertain, still hidden behind the soft white teeth. As if to encourage him, Rune holds his friend's hand in his own and he rubs their noses together gently, tenderly. Finally, Barry gives a slow, careful, Lick over Rune's lips, as gentle and as if he watched himself to not hurt him or not cross an unspoken line. The great white tail swooshes in the in the water back and forth, and the scarred face is brightened with an excited smile. The hussy got exactly what he wanted. However, even with the trick fulfilled, Bernie lingers. When he doesn't move away, Rune gives him a small lick in return. Then he turns his head slightly and licks him again. The big St. Bernard dog opens his mouth again, but not to raise it a touch of objection. He lets his tongue out again to meet the huskies. The sun is giving way to pass and the two dogs start making out more openly. The wet tongues brush against each other while exploring their partner's lips. A deep, clear, audible, sensual moan rumbles through the band's white mist while Burry's hands rises to pet wounds, fluffy cheeks, and then to scratch the back of his head. Locked in their passionate kiss, they look completely oblivious to the rest of the world. Well, they're really going at it, huh? Yeah, I get a feeling Burry's going to have quite a hangover to wake up to tomorrow. But it's okay, it's fine to be a little crazy tonight. 
Bernie stares at with a cheerful wink and puts his arm over my shoulder. That's right, maybe it is. But still, while I have been living with the dogs for many years, I know they are very special and affectionate people by nature. And I watched William Bernie doing that in front of us. I can't help but feel a bit weird, but feel a weird burning ache inside my chest. Jealousy? They are really going at it, though. I nod my head in the direction I think Max finally noticed Boone's hand rubbing Boyd's thighs. It slowly crawls towards Boyd's pocket, which now sports a dark red pointy tip. And they don't look like they're about to stop. Oh boy, okay, yeah. Maybe they're maybe that's too crazy after all. Max starts fake coughing to catch her attention, but both Boyd and Boone Seem to be completely deaf to that, even when Max makes an exaggerated cough almost as loud as a sound, the other dogs don't stop. I can believe Burry being so drunk and distracted he wouldn't notice us, even so, he can get lost in his own thoughts sometimes. But I'm near certain that Will is perfectly aware of everything, but he chooses to pretend otherwise. That's what hussies do. As we're watching the two big dogs banging out in the red snakes staring into their loins, both me and Matt seem to conveniently cover our own crosses with our free hands. He glances at me, and he's evidently as much at, as much at loss as I am. Let's get out of here. What should we do? We should, should we leave them alone? Should I go to them and pull them apart? Or perhaps we should join them? One, two, one, two. Okay, is it recording yet? This similar is. Suddenly a sharp, loud, unnatural sounding voice thunders through the whole cell to make it all of us jump to attention. I recognize it as my own voice playing from the speakers. Okay, yeah, this seems okay. A couple of sharp coughs pierce through the air, making us physically cringe. I know exactly what it is. I woo everyone. Look here. Exactly one. Actually, they don't need that introduction, just the info. The sort of recording the bear, no point to several hundreds of dogs longer than necessary. Most of them don't refer to me by my name anyway. Everyone else in the room glances at me. I wish I could just disappear right now. I was sure I would remove those unnecessary bits. I know that another throat clearing cough is coming, so I push myself to the middle of the pool and dive underwater. Unfortunately for me, the sound still reaches me even there. Oh, ooh, you're human here. Yeah, exactly. Not a painful pause. Then I sigh and that voice starts again briefly without unnecessary emotions. One hour until the skies ablaze. Five minutes until the skies ablaze. Dogs outside, please cover your ears. The turret will shoot in ten, nine, eight. Oh no, this is just terrible. Three, two, one. Of course, nothing happens. We still have. One more hour before the south. Okay, now just to cut in, just to cut into few messages and messages and schedule to, to play at the right times. Easy peasy. I was surface to meet Master's laughing face. Ha <laughs> Luke, what the hell was that? Must have saved the first message while I clearly remember cutting out sort of files from the other two instances, but I must have used a um. On a boy's recording for the. Oh, I can start recording now. Let's cut it into. I saw a click ends the transmission. Message tell where it's even live here. You know, sometimes I talk to myself too. That's kind of cute. I'm sure you wouldn't like to transmit that over to everyone at Shelter, right? Oh, yeah, definitely not. They still chuckles and pats my shoulder with encouragement. Honestly, I appreciate him making fun of that instead of ignoring it. That actually makes it easier. I glance around the bath to see Blue and Burry sitting separately now on opposite sides of the bath. We eat some kind of, of a free snack while looking all smug and happy. Burry, on the other hand, sits water out of a bottle as a towel covering his crotch. I'm clearly not the only one who, the only one having unfortunate mishaps tonight. Burry does as well. I bet that many dogs outside right now allow themselves to be more stupid than usual. And just like Matt shows me, it doesn't need to be anything to dwell over. As he swam towards Burry and bump him in his belly, making a lighthearted comment to light him up.
as we all sit and joke about each other, I can't help but feel a little melancholic. We can finally hang out like real friends and be killers and happy, but this time is limited in our exception. The turret will suit, the night will end, and nothing will change. Still, what's going to come is important right now. I can push it out of my mind for the night. What matters is the warmth of the water in our company we share in this moment. The night isn't over just yet, and I'm going to use that use the remaining time we have to the fullest. The countdown the final countdown for Skies of Blaze. Oh, suddenly I hear I can hear someone entering the main corridor to the baths. Heavy footsteps slowly grow closer and closer. When I look at Mass, he takes a few sniffs in the air and he smiles. Wimberry give him a knowing nod with big grins on their muzzles. Hey, that's a cheap sword. That's a cheap sword. His pants, no underwear in sight, huh? And the music box. Matt, Chief, are you there? Woo. I know that voice. Oh boy, I know that voice. He sounds a bit like he did in the morning at the tavern. Is he drunk again? Come here, boy. We're in the bath. Let's enter to the right. I go up and glance in the direction of the approaching sound on the stairs. So I know exactly whom I'm going to see. I slowly submerge myself in water down to my nose as if that could hide me from our new game. Chief, Burry, sir, Max. Oh, puppy. What are you doing here? Chief, Burry, sir, Max. Oh, puppy. What are you doing here? Oh my, oh my. Did you invite Teak to the bath, Luke? Like Alan? Like who? Why didn't you tell me? We will wait for him after the concert. I say my house with Murray's head. I try to do my best to not do that too eagerly. Wait, why not, Luke? Wait, you told me why. Why? Thanks again for helping us, by the way. We couldn't have done a performance without you, Teak. No problem. Anything for you, Max. Come on, boy, drop your clothes and hop in. There's more than enough space. We can f even finish the duel, you know? Now that we're in private, none of us need to be embarrassed anymore. Me and T glance at each other while Matt smirks. Finally, it hits me the dust compares him from before. No, I'm not going to strip and fall. I ain't drunk, Max. <laughs> a bit sorry. Come drink with us. I was just joking. How are you? T glares at me. It looks like he wants to say something, but in the end he holds his tongue. He glances at Max instead while scratching his head looking at Beth Seepers. You know, Max, I would like that. I come in, then. The water is great. We do not have spare months, so I hope you will be fine to accept mine. I will limit myself to drinking water for now. No, no, it's okay. Don't worry about me, sir. I love the journey through you. But, you know, I had different plans for the night. You know, after the opponents outside. I brought Cooper onto one of the hills outside so he wouldn't miss the skies if we drank a few and we had a talk. I didn't want to, but he gave me an order to leave him there and don't come back until I don't until I do what I have been planning for the last few weeks. So I drank a few more with him for covers and went I went looking for you. I was surprised to not find you outside, then someone told me. Well, thank you for finding the time to pay us a visit before the skies of barn. Pass my best wishes to Cooper. Happy skies of blaze, puppy. H Happy skies of blaze, Chief. Boy, sir, Max. Rude. Hmm. What the damn? The wolf? What are any of you doing anyway? Are you okay with wolves now, too? It's okay, boys. Okay, calm down. He's harmless. When I choose not to be harmful, yes. We can find him. We do not question Luke's judgment. I told you he's here. He's here, T. 
I said, Alan is here. Yeah, even more of a reason to get you out of here. All right, uh, sorry. I'm calm, I'm calm now. Good boy. Listen, man, so I was thinking, and, um, and, you see, I was excited for the night. I hurried back to shelter from the excavation because I was planning to make this night very special. It always is. Yes, but it's even more special when it says a special person in. Um, oh man. I was still myself for this moment through my whole trip. I practiced over and over so much that Cooper told me to shut up. Yeah, I must sound like it's just a dork right now. <laughs> Sorry, T, I don't follow. I do, though. Judging by Rune's smirk and Burry's nervous like visiting fingers, they surely understand it as well. T himself looks the most nervous that I have I have ever seen him. He takes a deep breath while still at his own feet. M M Max! Yes? Watch the skies with me. Please. Sure. Come in the bath we can watch together. No. I mean, no. Together, like someone else. Alone. Oh? So? Tink. So I'm thinking for the night. Luke invited me first. Maybe next time. I really wanted to spend some time with you alone tonight. You're still welcome to join us, right? Of course. Absolutely. No, that's okay. I just. I will just get wasted with the other guys. <laughs> so, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Chuckling nervously, T walks away. Back into the darkness of the main corridor. I didn't even look at him. I was afraid to see what his eyes were. So, if he looked back. All of us sat in silence for a while before Matt's finally spoke up. I feel sorry now. Don't be. This is not this, the last guy's ablaze. Yeah, you two little pups will still have a chance to have your romance another time. Romance? What do you mean? Oh, come on. Don't pretend you don't see it. You are a bright dog. Surely you cannot be blind to the tenses behind those words and gestures. No, seriously, I'm confused now. Man's glancing between all of us with a look of a scolded puppy. If he had pointy ears, I'm sure they would be folded back right now. Boy is right. Mass is usually a clever person in social situations. He can defuse squabbles, sell advice, and he can speak to the crowds in ways he's understood back. He understands people. It's baffling to see him confused about the current situation. I wonder in his mind is, it, is his mind so focused on other people that he's oblivious to the man's concerning his own self? Should I tell him or should I let him figure that out on his own? This is quite a pickle. Actually, no, that's not okay. With my heart jumping up my throat, I turn my head to see Teague standing in the entrance yet again. I can feel his stare on me as he hugs and snarls in his drunken anger. I was waiting for this for weeks. You shouldn't even be here. Who do you think you are to ruin everyone's plans and... Calm down, puppy, calm down. No, I won't. Why are you, why are you three even playing around with that? I never took you for a spotless once bending backwards for humans, but maybe I was wrong, huh? T, we know you're drunk and upset. You do not really mean it. You should sit down and... I'm not drunk. I'm the clearest thinking dog here, and the only one who will speak out when no one else will. He thinks he's got you by the balls because he's convinced you, oh, you can't use settle without him. That's bullshit. You're all getting manipulated by him and something bad is going to happen unless you get rid of him. T, you're starting to sound a bit silly. Am I? Am I? All you should know better than to trust the likes of him. Our, co our country has been at war with everyone for longer than I've been alive. Then the cats pretend to, pretend to be your family only to use and abandon you, Max. Then the bulls slay countless of your friends in the army chief. Then the dragons promise us a union or the door across us in the end, bro, sir. Indeed, but not the humans. If we didn't have one of the humans, we wouldn't even have shelter. Why would the humans want us here, huh? Can you tell for sure he isn't going to door across us, too? Of course not. Nobody knows what he's thinking. None of us can understand him. 
can you? But you should still know from experience, by the time you come to regret, it will be almost too late in the human's world. Just, just shut up. Bloody hell, just shut the fuck up, you duckhead. Ever since you came to shelter, you have been a major pain in the ass, but we still welcome you with open arms. We accept anyone. You have been living off our generosity, and you've yet to contribute anything meaningful. Who do you think you are to tell us who should and shouldn't be in the shelter? But, Max, the humans. Damn it, Teague, stop saying humans. You have never met another human. So, so what? If there's one, then obviously there are more. No, there are no other humans. Not in the whole wide world, only Luke. And Max freezes mid sentence and gives me a worried side glance. I swear I can see him growing pale under his fur. He stutters while trying to come up with the right words. Hey, I didn't mean it like that. To be fair, we don't know. There may be more of you. Somewhere. Five minutes until the skies are blaze. I'm oh, so sorry for upsetting you, Max. I only wanted to. T, I think you should go for now. We should have a long talk tomorrow. T looks between all of us. He opens his mouth to say something. In the end, he says his arms and storms off the bath. And better go and lock the gate. Where he gets out of the water and disappears in the darkness of the corridor outside. The rest of us sit in silence. T comes to the bath was the last thing I wanted to happen tonight. Every time I see him, it turns into something unpleasant. Just for the day, just for one night, I wanted to forget about everything that has been bothering me lately. For just a few hours, I needed this feeling of belonging as a part of the pack of my friends, because that's the closest to a pack I can hope for, for now, or maybe forever. What Matt said just now, about no other humans being around, that's something I try not to think about. I've always clung to the hope that one day I will meet another one like me, because of how improbable that may be. Because the alternate, because the alternative feeling, I mean, because the alternative feels so painfully lonely. Now, after hearing everything that was just said, I feel that unpleasant coldness in my stomach, like little icicles. Calm down. It's okay now. I have to get a hold of myself like I always do. The claim of the night is coming. I can't worry my friends now. I can't worry them. Hey, I'm sorry. No, it's okay, but I still have to sell that teak. Hmm? Teak? He's worried about teak? It's okay, mate. You can apologize to him tomorrow. Give him a smooth he'll forget about all he'll forget all about it. What? So what you meant before was Anything grows dis and mute to me. I stop paying any attention to their words. My mind gets flooded for intelligible thoughts and I feel the cold sparks growing in my stomach. Even the hot water doesn't feel any warm any warm to me anymore. This is how I've been feeling when waking up from nightmares lately. A block of ice sitting in my gut, flowing through my veins, keeping me awake at night. This is a cold truth that I've been avoiding like a gobble child at the back of my head my mind. I always knew, even those whom I consider friends would never treat me like they treat their own, I would never be one of them. I glanced towards the darkest corner, but Alan isn't there anymore. He left. Maybe in the end he was right about everything. What am I even doing here? Dogs outside, please cover your ears. The terrible suit in ten, nine. Here it goes, here it goes. Eight, seven. Hey mate, look up, you gotta miss it. Six, five, four, Luke, Luke, three, two, one. Those cover their ears while having their eyes up in the sky. I don't even bother. Scars of believe is never supposed to be for me. Sing is dragon silence, the silence before the storm, as they say. Except, the silence never ends. Um, what well, doesn't suit? Keep your eyes covered, or it will take you by surprise. No. Something is off. Did you mess up the timing, Luke? <laughs> That's hilarious. This is begging to make it in the window off. Oh, come on. Don't make fun of him. He's embarrassed enough. You should probably go and fix it, huh? Go and fix it, then. <laughs> I would if I could. 
Come on, Luke, stop joking. A bunch of people are waiting outside. Yeah, they can wait. I grab a bottle of ale and bring it to my lips. Only to find out that it's already empty, I throw it hard into the water, close on my breath. Hey, are you? Are you angry, mate? No, I'm not angry. Why? You kind of sound and act like you're angry. It's not a big issue that the cannon did not sue on time. Do not let that sour you. I don't care about the turret. Go and tell them I will suit, I'll make it suit tomorrow. Or maybe in two days. I don't know. It will suit when I feel like it. Rise out of the water and step onto the now warm tile floor. I feel myself wobble from the alcohol for sitting in water for hours and from all the built up tension. All the built up frustration. What the hell are my pants? You're just joking, right? You're going to go and check on the candle, aren't you? Of course, Luke would never. No, I'm serious. You do whatever you want. I'm going to bed. Seriously, where are my damn pants? Luke, what's wrong? Nothing, nothing is ever wrong. Everything is just bloody perfect. Luke, this is not like you. You are acting very inconsiderate. Me? I am being inconsiderate? I've been working my ass off to prepare all of this for you. I always cut on sleep before every sky's a blaze on top of keeping the usual shelter and maintenance so you can party. Everything I do is for you. I made this place to give you a home. To give you all home. I pat that any stray dog can be a part of. You know. But I am, am I a part of your pack the same way that every dog is? I do not understand. What does that have to do with anything? Of course you are. Yeah? Then why do you let Teat do that to me? Oh crap, I think I'm starting to understand now. You thought... You thought what? Don't you give any of that we thought you didn't care or we thought it wasn't a big deal. You are canines, you can literally use magic to look into my mind and feel what I feel. Luke, every time I see T, he talks straight about me. Not because I did anything to him, because I never did, but only because I'm a human. And what do you do? What do you all do? Support him and laugh it off. When he dangled me over the floor like a rag doll nearly crushed my arm, he didn't stop him, wound. He just stared at me and made jokes afterwards. Well, I confided in you, but you acted like I was overreacting, like he never did anything wrong. You always, you've always been on Tink's side. Now he comes to the bath and straight up rants at me in my face and you react only when he, st when he starts questioning your judgment. And then you don't even take a moment to see if I'm alright because you worry about him? I thought maybe at least Alan would stand up for me, but no, he just left. That's fine. I won't give him shit for that as eagerly as I as I'm sure all you would like me to. In the end, all he did was show exactly as much care as each of you had done. Maybe take his right, maybe I should just pack up and leave. See if you can can take care of all this crap by yourself. How about that? But of course not. You can't have shelter out me. If I leave it dies. I am shelter. I'm starting to believe Tiki, you know. You really you don't really care about me, do you? You only tolerate me because you have no other choice. Luke, that's just T. He's a dumbass. He doesn't even mean what he says, what he's saying most of the time. No, it's not just T. It's everyone. Whenever a new dog comes, they don't come to befriend me. They go to the other dogs. I always have to go and make it the first move. I am the one who has to break the ice and see past our differences in their presence. You can't imagine how tiring that gets. Obviously, we're different. And I'm, a can I'm a human, and you're canines. I tried to ignore that plain fact, but there's only so far that a one side did not can take me. The truth has always been clear and obvious from the start. I will never grow a tail or fur on my skin. No matter how hard I train, I will never match you in strength, dexterity, and your social skills. I have been bearing with it, clinging to the hope that somehow made the best is yet to come. But whatever I have already lived through the best of my life, whether this is all well, this is as good as it gets. I will always be the only human amongst all, among all you, all your dogs. I will never have a plot, and I will always be a stranger here. Luke, it's not like. What is that? What is going on? I, I don't know. I swear, I didn't.
All was looking between each other and crossed the now dark room. The sound of bubbles in the, in the bare seas that we can only hear the cold wind, the cold night wind. It was a few distant howls reached us from the outside. Man stands out of the water and climbs the rubble to reach the hole at the edge of the shelter. He lets out a long howl of his own full focus. By the time he, by the time his, his call dies out, his fur look, looks like it's made of sighting icicles. Still, he stays in the cold wind and focuses silently. Did he connect with someone? We all look at him, awaiting the news from the outside. Man looks, looks at us and can read fear in his eyes. The power across the whole shelter is down. Something is wrong with the turret. The feeling of cold in my soul returns and grows tenfold. I forget to even breathe. What have I done? Is the horizon clear? No. We are coming. So that was a bear scene for Max. All the bear scenes are really the same. Really, I mean, whether it's Burry, Wound, or Max, it's not until after the, the turret fails that we really get to go to their respective roots. But I like the other two bear scenes, I didn't make the choices to include Alan in them so I was able to do that for this bath scene with Max so we get to see, so we got to see Alan in the bath scenes. Now I think if I had made some different some choices some different choices in the bath scene we might end up we will have seen we will have seen Rune pick on Alan in Luke would have made him apologize to Alan for whatever he did. But anyway, we'll see some of those parts in the Barker's, cor the Barker's Corner. That's what I call it. You know, the Barker's Corner, we get to see more of Alan. I'll make a separate video on the Barker's Corner eventually. Not anytime soon, but eventually later this summer, I'll make a video we should go to the Barker's Corner and we also get to play a few new scenes in the bear scene between Alan and, and Rune. So everything's going good until T came in there. It ruined the whole thing of his presence. And That's when Luke had enough of Burry, Max, and Rune. After that brief moment of Max standing up to Teak and telling him off for the way he treated Luke, a few minutes later he starts feeling bad for Luke, feeling bad for Teak for yelling at him. And that's what really made Luke upset because basically he basically, basically Max is regretting speaking up for Luke in that sense, you know. But he was yelling at at Teak in Luke's defense, but Max ended up feeling sorry and telling the others that he was sorry for yelling at Teak. So Luke took that, took that as, as Max going back on him defending Luke and that he regret defending Luke and that he still just sat down and let T bore him. That's how Luke took it. 
So that made them upset and like like they really don't consider him a friend and they just tolerate with him for the sake of keeping the place alive and functioning. So next time we'll we'll get into Max's route and see how they deal with everything that just happened with Luke and I mean with um Teak and the turn not working and just like with Bowie and Mac just like just like with Bowie and Rune Luke will have a have a discussion with Matt to deal with everything from Teak to the turn not working and and really evaluate their friendship and how they're going to how they go how the how their friendship is going to continue further down. But I believe I with Burries and Wounds Root and Wentz both of them promised to loot that they would they would that they would care for him more and defend him more. I believe that's what will also happen in with Max, he'll be sorry and he'll want to he'll be apologetic to Luke and he'll want to promise that he'll defend him more. Though I think like in those other two roots they admit that they can't understand but they got a power and then where they can um supposedly they got a power they can that they can tell what, what the other person's feeling. And Luke thought that both Luke, that both Burley and Rune had the power to understand how somebody's feeling. And that made him even more angry because he thought that they understood him and that despite him being sad, they just, they just ignore that. But find. But he found out that actually they don't know how he feels. They don't have that power to do that. And that's probably going to happen with Alex. I mean, I mean that's probably going to happen with um, Max as well. So, you know, the name's confused. <laughs> so, that's all a center for now. All, this, all the information for the game's description box below, including the Patreon and Twitter. Where you can support the game and get updates in advance. You can also look at news for the game and see when new updates will come public. So, thank you all for watching. See you next time.